day, the atmosphere is relaxed, then the high-speed dash. Tension mounts. Drivers chat with crews, finely tuned machines sit along pit road. We are racing at Dover. This is a short race. You gotta really claw and scratch from the very beginning. For some, it is easy. But others find the going a bit hairy. You get too aggressive, old Miles will jump up and grab you and throw you in the wall. Uh, what a picture-perfect evening here in Dover, Delaware. The Monster Mile hosting the NASCAR Camping World Truck Series for the 18th year. Great to have you with us tonight, along with Michael Waltrip, Phil Parsons. I'm Vince Welch, and down on Pit, Ro Pit Road, it'll be Caitlin Vinci and Hermie Sadler. Hello, Hermie. Hello, Vince. Dover, in one word, demanding. 24 degrees of banking in the corners, nine degrees of banking on the straightaways. You have to attack this racetrack. You would not think it would provide many first time winners, but history shows us differently. Five times drivers have gotten their first victory at this racetrack. Today, drivers like Ben Rhodes, who has been very, very hot in recent weeks, will try to make it number six. Caitlin? Well, Hermie, let's talk about one of the organizations that's often behind these drivers when they get their first truck series win, and that would be Kyle Busch Motorsports. Let's take a look at some of the numbers and the superstars they have created over the years. As you can see, six drivers scored their first career win with KBM. Two drivers in the field, Harrison Burton and Todd Gillen, to do it today. They both qualified in the top 15, making their first truck start here at Dover, Vince. All right, Caitlin, thank you very much, and it is a star-studded group, that's for sure, that has run for Kyle Busch Motorsports in the past, and what a great young group they have ready to go here this evening. Before the 32 fire, we've got to get the command. We'll go down trackside for it here at Dover. And now, for the most famous words in motorsports, please welcome Mike Cote, Bar Harbor Foods President, Chief Executive Officer. Drivers, start your engines! The trucks are fired. They're getting ready to roll. 200 laps at the Monster Mile when we come back. Trucks just moments away from rolling here at Dover, the NASCAR Camping World Truck Series. One of the most challenging tracks drivers and teams will face all season long. Michael, as we take a look at the Camping World Track description. Here's the numbers, Vince. A mile in length, 24 degrees of banking, nine on the straightaway. That straightaway is banked more than a lot of corners we go to. You could take all that and wipe it out and just put wild because that's what it feels like to drive a lap here at the Monster. How about the race analysis, Phil? See, this race is 200 laps, 200 miles. You see our three stages. The first one will end on lap 45. The second one will end on lap 90. And then we race to the checker there of 110 laps. 18th race we've had here at Dover. And last year's winner, Matt Crafton, looking to go back to back here. Starting outside of the top 10, though, it'll be fun to watch Crafton battle through the field. Speaking of starting positions, let's take a look at our starting lineup for tonight. It led off by a couple of drivers that certainly have made their mark this weekend, for sure, if not beforehand, because they have been impressive in the early going this season. Chase Briscoe and Ryan Truex, Christopher Bell, Austin Sendrick in row two. There's a whole bunch of youth up here in the top 10. <laughs> ben Rhodes, extremely close to that first win a couple weeks ago at Kansas. There you see Parker Kligerman. He's got a fast truck. Ross Chastain, these guys are all running great. There's Johnny Sauter, our defending champion, back in row number six. He had a good truck in practice. You want to know a Johnny Sauter Bok toy? He's never led a, led a lap here at the Monster. That's hard to believe. Uh, can, can you believe that? Last year's champion. Austin Hill, a fast truck. Yeah, he had a good day yeah. yesterday in, in practice and again today in qualifying. Stuart Friesen from Ontario, Canada. 32 trucks tonight, 16 rows deep. Jordan Anderson with a little damage to that one truck yesterday in practice. J.J. Yaley, had a good run here. Saw the sunshine 
through the clouds. It is an absolutely perfect evening for racing here at Dover. And before we get ready to go green, let's check in downstairs once again, beginning with Caitlin. Well, Mike Hillman Jr., the crew chief for the pole sitter, Chase Briscoe, with me. And uh, you got a rookie starting on the front. How do you keep him calm, relaxed for the next 200 miles? You know, it's really tough to keep anybody calm and relaxed at Dover. Hopefully, it takes time to catch his breath in between the corners. We'll uh, work all night long and just do the best we can to be there at lap 200 and try to win this thing. Well, thanks for your time. Good luck to you, Hermie. Junior Joyner is the crew chief for Matt Crafton. Good news, you won here last year. Bad news, it's been about a year since you have won. You start 13th. What will be the key to driving your way to the front today? Uh, whew, turn, being able to charge the corner and turn center off and, and set up a lot of these young guys that are in front of us. I mean, they, they got good speed. They've shown that. Uh, but our Menards Tundra is really good. Like, we've been really good. Uh, all day in practice. He likes it center off. Yeah, just a little too free to qualify for us, and we just barely missed the last round. So um, we're going to fight hard, and we maybe get outside the box if we need to, but we'll be there at the end. The defending race winner, Vince, will start 13th. Looking forward to seeing Matt Crafton try to make his way through the field. Going to have lots of good looks at it. Some of our onboard cameras. Phil. Yeah, we're going to ride along on the Jags on board with Cody Coughlin. Cody had his best finish this year at Daytona when he finished 11th. Looking to improve on that, and he will start that Toyota from the 17th spot. Looks like these guys are going to be battling that sun for a while, Phil. You're going to take a look here at Johnny Sauter. He drives the Allegiant Airline Chevy. A really fast guy this weekend. He's in the 11th position. He scored stage points in every stage this year. Can he do it again today? We're going to also ride along with the Protect Your Melon Chevrolet of Ross Chastain. Let's see if we can holler at him. Hey, Ross Chastain, you're up in the top 10 here. You've had a couple top 10 finishes this year. This truck has really been fast. What do you got for him tonight? Oh, man, I think as long well, as we keep it turning around the bottom and uh, keep our track position up here, uh, I think this Protector Melon Chevy can uh, surprise some more people tonight. All right, keep, protect your melon out there. All right, thanks, guys. <laughs> Let's hop on board with fourth place starter, Austin Sendrick. He's a global rally cost racer, Phil. That means he jumps over humps and eels. That's what it feels like to race here at Dover, jumping over the humps. He's got the Ford onboard camera, and we'll fight right along with him today. We're also going to ride along with the Bar Harbor Toyota on board for Ryan Truex. Best career star starting up on the front row. Top 10 finishes his last three starts. That team is poised to win. Well, it's going to be fun tonight. Great look out the uh, front bumper of Ryan Truex's machine. And Phil, that's the look I want. Isn't, yeah. isn't that what you'd yeah. like to see? Just Clear racetrack. Only thing ahead of you is the pace car. We've got some veterans, guys like Matt Crafton, who hasn't won in more than a year. Johnny Sauter, the defending series champion, trying to get his first win of the year. And so many young guys that are hoping for their first career win here tonight. Yeah, and Hermie told us we've had five first-time winners here at this racetrack. Nearly a third of the times we started the engines here, a new guy has driven to victory lane and Phil in the opening. We talked about a bunch of guys that could get that first win here today. It's a tough place to get it, though. There are so many challenges, not just to the drivers, but to the equipment, the crew chiefs. What about the choice by Briscoe? He's going to take the outside on this start. It's going to put him right in front of his teammate. I wonder if they're going to orchestrate this start take off together and try to grab positions one and two. Remember, home game for Ryan Truex now. He wants to lead this race. Chase Briscoe, the pole winner on the outside in the 29, and Ryan Briscoe on the inside, or uh, Ryan Truex on the inside in the 16. Green is out, racing at Dover. A little bit of an aborted start, it looked like, by Chase Briscoe. Maybe started a little bit sooner than he wanted and to. And then back, back off a little bit, it looked like. And it gave Truex all the momentum. Ooh, somebody's into the outside wall. Was that the four of Christopher Bell? Green still out, still under green. Maybe Austin Sendrick, the 19. It looked like, I thought, maybe a blue truck. Truex leads the first lap. Ben Rhodes trying to work that middle groove outside of Ross Chastain. And that's what we love, Vince. That's why this track's always been so fun throughout the years. You could really run high if you needed to. Hug the bottom or run high. You had options as a driver. We could see Rhodes there wasn't able to keep pace. And lost that position. Talk about charging the corner. Ross Chastain charged the corner, and it stuck. 
that bottom line down around the bottom. I mean, that's that's the preferred groove, though, right, Mike? I think so, and that it could change throughout the course of this event. Vince, if the rubber starts to build up on the bottom, maybe they start up toward the middle. And I'd like to see, like I said earlier, that high line develop so we could see some two, maybe even three wide racing in the corners. These guys will begin to use other lines in the turns as their tires heat up. How about that yellow? Toyota Tundra right there the 46 of Todd Gilliland making his first series start as you look at Ryan Briscoe in the 29 or uh, excuse me Chase Briscoe in the 29 Ryan was pretty good race car driver too. <laughs> and still, still, still yeah. a good race car driver Phil I checked out the side of both the 19 and the four I didn't see any damage, no damage there so I guess maybe just a little wide off turn two but no no contact. Ben Rhodes in that 27 just ahead of the 18 of Noah Gregson. Gregson extremely fast in practice. Coming off a top 10 at Charlotte, our last event. Had a great run up at Martinsville. This kid just keeps getting better and better. And this is a solid effort to start this race. Looks like he has a bit better of a truck than Rhodes right now. You can see he's really able to duck that Toyota right down to the edge of the asphalt or pavement. I was talking to his crew chief, Marcus Richmond, last night, and they said they had some wicked fast speed with that 18 truck. You can see the corners are concrete. Right down at the bottom, there's some pavement there. That's where you want to put that nose of your truck if you can. Truex is very impressive early in the going. Ryan Truex has led them all from the second starting position. Saw just a moment ago, finished second at our season opening race at Daytona. Crew chief, Scott Zipadelli. Team owner Shaggy Atori. Pete team continues to improve. I was talking to Scott Zipadelli this afternoon down in the garage area, and he, I said, to me, Scott, it's really has to be a lot about people. He said it's totally about people. You have to have the people that can get the job done, the people that have a passion for the sport, and Shiggy Atori has that now with his people. By the way, Phil, there's a bunch of them over there, too. You can, you can tell they got a full complement of guys working on that number 16 truck and this is a brand new truck. I think it's the third time they've run it this year. They're building more new trucks as well. So could be a story starting right here at Dover about how Ryan Truex contends for a championship in 2017. Out the front of Cody Coughlin. You heard how Cody had to feather that throttle off the corner. We talked about there during qualifying. You'll get in the throttle there and sometimes you'll have to ease back off it to exit the corner here because these corners are so tight. Camden Murphy off the pace and headed back to the garage and that 63 machine as you continue to get the view of Cody Coughlin. And there's the 16. That's the leader. Ryan Truex. Not surprised to see a Truex out front at Dover, right? We've seen that plenty. A lot of times it's been his older brother Martin. Ryan has led them all so far. The NASCAR Camping World Truck Series from the Monster Mile, Dover, Delaware. Inside, look at Johnny Sauter's machine and carrying the branding of Autism Delaware. Great to see. We had a wonderful time yesterday with the three of us participating in a uh, golf outing at the DuPont Country Club in support of Autism Delaware. What a terrific event and a terrific cause. Yeah, Artie Kempner does such a great job. But just the heart and the passion for everyone there that day is it just makes you smile. It makes you feel good inside that you're helping someone that is so passionate about a cause and uh, just so thankful for Artie and, and yesterday it was a ball. We had a great time now. None of us played all that well I don't think but we still had a great good time. There's a big surprise. Check this groove out. Where's he going? Parker Kligerman in the 75 around the top. Wow. Vince I haven't seen that. That was that was crazy. Look at that momentum he gets from the High side as he exits. Still there, still there. Clear, 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 clear. That's Kligerman up to the fifth spot, and he's bringing Chastain with him. He takes that high road as well. I, I thought, I really thought that Kligerman was crashing. I, I think Austin Sindrick <laughs> thought the same thing. You know, when he was crashing, I thought this crash has taken a long time to develop. It seemed like a couple laps. What do you got, Hermie? Since Ross Chastain has been giving that 66 truck a tremendous ride all weekend long. Qualified night up to six. He's got a passenger inside that truck, a little bear, has been riding with that truck ever since Daytona. They've found it to be good luck. And 
and they may need some good luck for the rest of the day. Ross has reported a potential battery issue. The voltage inside of that truck is dropping on the dashboard. He's turned his fans off inside the truck. They're hoping just a little more luck left in that truck for today, Caitlin. Well, looking at Ryan Truex, the current race leader, he's got progressively better in every single race that they dumped a lot of resources into this truck. In this hometown race for me, said, I feel like this racetrack owes me one. I noticed his father, Martin Truex Sr., also watching from the pit box. Right now, Truex just saying, I need a little bit of rear lateral grip off the turns. That's the feedback he's given to that team, guys. Caution is out. Contact over in Back turn stretch. two. How about that? Oh, big Pretty nice. heavy. Austin Hill, the 0-2 truck. The 52, Stuart Friesen got some damage in that as well. There's Wendell Chavis in the 49. See the damage to the left rear of that Chevrolet truck. This guy is all back around the 19th, 20th, 21st spot back in that territory. They run so fast here at Dover, Vince. I think they oh, started. Wow wrecking over in turn two and didn't get done until they were down halfway down the back straightaway. Big damage for Stuart Friesen. Michael, you talk about the straightaways here being banked nine degrees. If something happens on exit of these corners, there's really nowhere to go but to the inside. Let's see if we can figure out what happens. Look at the top of our screen. Looks like Chavis got loose and started it. Oh, and he backs up the track. Oh, yeah. and, and the drivers did an excellent job. They thought he would stay on the bottom. That's conventional wisdom here. Everything slides off the track. Down, stay high, stay high, stay high. Watch where you're going, watch where you're going. Oh. Inside, 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 inside. Keep coming, keep coming, keep coming. Clear right there, bud. I got to tell you. A little you. bit of contact. Talk to me about it. Talk to me about it. Wasn't bad for the 13 truck. He did a nice job. Stuart Friesen, the further back you are, Phil, you're in that sweet spot. Well, it's actually a sire spot. You're back just far enough where you can't see what's happening up off turn two. And it's almost impossible to get one of these big trucks stopped. A handful of trucks involved, some with a little more serious damage than others. Coming back to Dover. On Fox, check your local listings for the game in your area. Matt Crafton is in, and he's bringing others with him. Hermie? Vince Jr. Joyner, the crew chief for the 88, told us prior to the race that their truck had been a little bit loose, and if they needed to go outside the box to fix it, that's what they do. So they're going to come in, put tires on this truck. That adjustment you see right there is the track bar going down on the right side. This truck has been too loose for Matt basically since they've been here in race trim, and they know it's not good enough to win, so they're taking a gamble. Four tires for the 88. I like this gamble, Phil. Yeah. We, we're back in ninth place. Can't win from there. He wasn't making any progress. So let's come in, work on it, and see if we got something for them later. Yeah, maybe that when the stage one ends, everybody else comes to pit road, they stay out for some track position and see what that thing will do in clean air. Looked like he made some ground on John Hunter and check there on pit road. Those trucks were fairly close together and Crafton pulled around. Be interesting to see if I think there's 17 different sections that they monitor speed on pit road. Pit road speed limit, 35 miles per hour. Talk about the fact that this is a quick race, goes by in a hurry, so if any mistake on pit road could cost you a chance to win the race. It's been action packed so far. Let's take a better look at the uh, action on the track with the Liberty Mutual spotter coverage of that 29 at Chase Briscoe. It's the wall right here like normal, and I still need you to be up there right here, but then as you get later in the corner, start coming down right in this area here. And then you can have a nice straight runoff as you get closer to them. You can kind of get underneath them on the X there, there for the air. Yeah, I've seen trucks get up there. The 75s been up there. It's not, you know, it's not super fast or anything, but it's just, it's not bad. Liberty Mutual spotter coverage. We were just having a conversation out on the roof with some of the spotters earlier, Mike, about their importance. Yeah, and there their positions are. And that was a spotter really coaching young Briscoe through the corner. While he was driving under caution, he says, I need you to be a little bit higher right there. And when you get to that point on the corner, he was watching Briscoe live and telling him where to go in the turns. And that advice he told him about that upper lane, I think it really could develop. Kligerman and Chastain both were making a little bit of ground up there. And that's a great sign, not only for these truckers, but for the Xfinity race tomorrow and the Cup guys on Sunday. It could be a great weekend of racing with the grooves that we're seeing out there. And I love the fact that our pole sitter is getting advice from a spotter. His spotter's been here way more than he has. This is Chase's first time here. There's a good look at Cody Coughlin. That 13's been on the crash clock. Remember, it's five minutes to get that repaired and back out and up to speed. I don't believe Coughlin will have any issues getting up to no, speed. I don't Just know a little. Either. 
bump on the left side there from Stuart Friesen as he went by. Friesen definitely took the uh, more significant damage in that contact. Here's the drive for autism onboard camera for Johnny Sauter. I think Sauter still could be a story. He slipped back to the 10th spot. See if he can make anything happen in the going coming laps. There's our fourth place starter, Austin Cendrick, with a Ford on board. He currently runs in the seventh spot. Good run, staying up in the top 10. There's Ross Chastain in the 66 truck with his bear on board. Got that's over on the, that's the bear over there on the left. <laughs> and there's our race leader. Wow, what a great start for Ryan Truex. Dove off into turn one, took the lead away, and never looked back. By the way, we mentioned uh, Cody Coughlin and, uh, of course, Stuart Friesen involved in that. Friesen has been checked and cleared and released from the medical center. John Hunter Nemechek struggled a bit in qualifying, qualified 20th. Up a couple of spots here early on. What do you got, Hermie? Well, Vince, he came down pit road same time as the 88, the 99, and the 24, but John Hunter Nemechek did not get tires. They took wedge, they put wedge in the truck, lowered the track bar on the right, but they did not take any tires or any fuel, so he has his full allotment still left on pit road, but the 88 did take tires. Yeah, I think that goes along with what most of the crew chiefs were speculating that this racetrack was going to get freer and freer, get looser and looser. We heard the report that Matt Crafton has been loose since he unloaded here, still loose, put four tires on that truck. Junior Joyner made some adjustments. You know, Phil, I think if you're a little bit tight, you don't make an unscheduled stop or you don't get off sequence. If you're a little tight, maybe work on that at a scheduled stop. But if you're loose at Dover, it'll get your attention in a hurry. These trucks are a real challenge flying off into these steeply banked turns dropping off the straightaway down into the turn you want to get that thing worked on i think this is probably one of the more challenging racetracks that we go to to try to drive a loose vehicle i don't think you can get away with it here unless your name is jimmy johnson well he's he's pretty good here he's done a nice job winning yeah. here 10 times and he likes a loose car so i think that just tells you maybe this place compliments a guy that can let it hang out a little bit when chase briscoe started the race he had the option inside or outside he took outside Michael, that got your attention a little bit. Brian Truex now the control vehicle. He's chosen the inside lane. Yeah, I think I like from what I've seen so far, that 16 truck down on the bottom, he's really able to hug the bottom of the concrete right against the, the black, dark asphalt down at the bottom. So uh, he likes that groove, and he's going to make sure he gets it. Remember, Chase Briscoe, that's his first first pole of his career here in the truck series. And it looked like it, it was not a real smooth start for Chase Briscoe. Look, as we talked, and it happened, took off then looked like he maybe felt like he went a little bit too early and then checked back up a little bit and then lost that lead. This is race six of the season. It all began in Daytona with Kaz Gralla getting that big win and then Christopher Bell followed it up on the mile and a half at Atlanta. And then Chase Elliott got the victory at Martinsville to comb that grandfather clock. And then we had the Kyle Busch party here for a couple weeks in a row on the mile and a half in Kansas as well as Charlotte. A couple of weeks in a row, a few stages in a row. It was all about Kyle Busch. Kyle Busch Motorsports, three wins this season with Bell and Kyle getting two. Kaz Gralla and Chase Elliott both out of the GMS camp. So GMS has won twice, KBM's won third, and there's some other guys wanting to get in on the party tonight, right? <laughs> three of them right there. Impressive seasons for all three of those young men to get things started. We've got a long way to go. Wouldn't be surprised to see any of those three in victory lane before it's all said and done. Of course, Ben Rhodes was almost there already, right, at Kansas before. I think, I think I'd be more, more surprised to see him not in victory lane this year, Vince. Check out Jesse Little there in that fourth position in the 97 truck. Built that as, in his dad's garage back in North Carolina. And there he is at Dover in the truck series running in the top five. So Ryan Truex on the inside, the control vehicle. That's Chase Briscoe in the 29 on the outside. The green back out, back to racing. Another great start by Ryan Truex. Too wide now for third. Jesse Little squeaks in front of Christopher Bell. Looked like Bell had a handful trying to hold onto that four machine. Look at this, three wide as they go in turn three. Wow. Wow, Chastain. Oh, trouble. Oh. Hang it on to it, Noah Gregson in the 18, Chastain in the 66, wow! I can't believe there wasn't a crash there. Awesome job by Ross Chastain saving that truck. The 18, you had to give Noah Gregson all the room he needed, which was about 90% of the racetrack. Gregson hopped in there just a little bit too deep and around he went. Watch it here, look at 
Gregson and then 18 just getting loose and getting into the back end of Chastain and that's 66. That was a terrific job by both of those drivers to maintain control. Look how sideways Gregson is on the bottom right into the 66. Probably Ross Chastain kept it from going around. No doubt. Let's ride along with. Oh. Easy, easy. All right, back at it. Still there, still there. All right, still inside, still inside. Nothing you can do about that, man. Just get it up. We'll be all right here. <laughs> Darn right there's nothing you can do about it, but it didn't slow Noah Gregson down. Now he's going after his teammate, Christopher Bell. Some terrific speed from that 18 of Gregson. We mentioned he led both practices yesterday. Ooh. Bit wow. of a wiggle there by Christopher Bell as his teammate Todd Gillen goes by. And here comes Austin Sendrick. He's going to dive down to the bottom and try to grab that spot. Bell's really loose, Phil. Really loose. I wonder if he may have a tire going. Look, ah, he's yeah. got a left rear tire going down, doesn't he? I believe you called it, buddy. We, we saw him nearly in that crash, in that near crash. We've got a problem. We're going to have to come in. Bottom clear. Outside 80. Bottom clear. Top Def covered. Yeah, definitely Top an issue. Two. Outside. Inside 98, top clear. Outside now, three men. Three men. Oh, oh there he goes. goes. And Christopher yeah. Bell Correct. is into the wall. Hang on to lock her down, lock her down. Right onto the pit lane. Second in points. Bell started, well, that restart, he started from the fourth position and it slipped seven spots back. And that tire goes down, crashes from 11th. He, Vince, he was in that. Near crash between his teammate Noah Gregson and Ross Chastain. I saw him sideways in the middle of that. Probably got a little contact there, Phil. That knocked a, a chunk out of that left rear tire. See a little bit of damage to the left rear. Probably not as much damage as, as he could have had by getting into the outside wall. And I think that he would have maybe tried to come to pit road, but it looked like maybe was it Grant Enfinger that jumped underneath him and put him in the middle. Didn't allow him to get to pit road and then was carrying too much speed when that left rear tire went down. Yeah, I think yeah. he was trying to get down yeah, and trying to get to yeah. pit lane and, and just not much room to move around here even when you need to, right? And I think you could see when the truck stopped there, that right front was locked up for a long way. That splitter is bent down on the right front and that means that he can't get the travel out of the front. The front end's bent down. They'll have to drop, a, drop that thing on some blocks or something to get that right side of that nose up. So a bad break for Christopher Bell, who came into this race second in the point standings, trailing Johnny Sauter by 15 points. Of course, Bell already has that win that would get him to the playoffs, but getting the points championship at the end of the regular season is huge. I guess I'll try to make your way to the playoffs, and they've turned off the engine there on that uh, four machine. More strategy, Phil, guys coming to pit road. Yeah, with nine laps left to go now, eight laps left to go in stage one. They just are they playing for stage two and winning the race? I you think, think so. I think so. Hermie? Been a great ride for Parker Kligerman in the 75. His truck was good around the top. He commented on the radio, money. But right now he's loose on late exit, four tires and an adjustment for the 75. Yeah, a lot of trouble on the right front, it looked like, on the 75. You see, you see the trucks going by that have already made their pit work. Like a gun problem there on the uh, front changer. So that's one of Harrison Burke stalls his truck trying to leave his pits. So several issues on pit road. Let's take a look at what's happening with Kligerman here on the uh, right front. He got the tire off, but it looks like he's having trouble right now. Watch the rear guy gets done. He goes to the other side. A bunch of, some lug nuts fell off. It looked like Mike. A couple of lug nuts off. He had to. Regroup, slow stop, but this is a strategy play, I think, Phil. They've just decided they're not going to worry about stage one, try to win stage two and the race. And that's everybody's goal, of course, but you can go out in so many different ways with stage racing, especially with the relatively short stages here at Dover. So Christopher Bell, who not finished outside the top 10 all season long, is out of the truck and done for the night. Let's take a look at what happened here with the four. That's Christopher Bell up there against the wall. It's Chastain and that, that left rear point. tire is already down, yep, guys. You sure can is, see it. Yeah. It's low right there. I don't. There's no contact with the 66. That tire is already deflating. Uh, does is there any contact? I know he gets loose. Must have. 
Must have cut it already, Phil. Is it, is yeah, it low I, there? I, I think it looks low there, Mike. Yeah, he didn't have any issues getting through that yeah. wreck. Hmm. Well, we'll uh, catch up with Bell and certainly get an understanding as to uh, how long that truck was handling the way it was that uh, would maybe give you an indication of how long that left rear was down. What about the Xfinity race in Charlotte last week? Got spun out on lap two, was able to survive that little slide through the grass and wound up with a top five finish. Not so fortunate here at Dover. The monster, she bites. Mm -hmm. I guess she's a heat. Yeah, the streak of uh, top 10 finishes is going to come to an end for Christopher Bell. But again, as you mentioned, Vince, already a winner this year. We know he's in the playoffs. And, and when someone, when you talk about that, Phil, and you say, well, he's already in the playoffs, so really what difference does it make? Well, he wants to win the points championship oh, yeah. at the end of the regular season because then you get an extra 15 points in the playoffs. So winning that points title is extremely important for all these teams, whether you've got to win or not. But I think he thinks he can win every race. Yep. So every, every time he has a problem, uh, there goes playoff points. I love that, Rudy Fugel. And and Christopher just bump fists down there because they know how good a team this is. They know that team can bounce back next week when we go to Texas and go right back to victory lane. We talk about strategy, Phil. The top six trucks haven't pitted yet, but everybody behind them has come to pit road. And so this is playing right into the hands of Matt Crafton. He's got those fresh tires. He obviously uh, made that adjustment. Be interesting to see if he can win this stage. And it might be a different a different truck for him when he gets out in some clean air too. Been struggling really loose all weekend. Ryan Truex on the inside in the white Toyota, and that's Chase Briscoe on the outside of that blue Ford. A lot better racing. start. A lot better start that time by Chase Briscoe. But a nice push from Jesse Little gives Truex the advantage. Little's going to be stuck on the inside. That's a hard. Job there hanging on to a truck when you're underneath another guy. Yeah, Briscoe knows there's some grip out there on the outside. Oh, and you see Jesse struggling. Not giving up though, but that truck was sideways. How does that handling change when you get right up oh, underneath somebody, Mike? It's just frightening the way the truck will change so dramatically. Vince, you lean on the air in these corners. You're running so fast down in the turns. You lean on that air. When there's a truck on the outside of you, there's a void of air between the truck and yours. And man, it'll turn you around in a hurry. You talk about side force. We didn't talk about side force, what, 15 years ago. But now that's so important to these trucks. And you lose that side, side force when you have that truck underneath you. There's a look at Matt Crafton. He's already come in to pit and uh, get some attention to his Toyota Tundra and Crafton back up inside the top 10 as you look at our race leader, Ryan Truex. Truex has led more laps in this race in the Kevin World Truck Series today than he had in his 24 previous. So a great start to this race and he's looking to win this stage. It sure is. Harrison Burton had a little issue on pit lane, Caitlin. Yeah, and he's currently P18 on the leaderboard. A tough pit stop for him. He stalled out trying to get going, and then he was too fast exiting. So now he's dropped himself down on the leaderboard to 18th, guys. He was running in the seventh spot when they decided to come to pit road on that most recent caution. These kids are learning so much. Look at Todd Gill and the arrow on the front of his truck, what he needs to do in order to move it around. Get it out from behind the eight. Go lower than him. Do something different to try to make that move. This is the final lap of stage one here at Dover. Ryan Truex has been in command much of stage one, and he's about to take the checkered of green and white, and the first stage is complete. Johnny Sauter will end this stage in the fourth spot. Stage points every single one this year for Johnny Sauter. First stage win of the season for Ryan Truex. Back to the Monster Mile at Dover. Johnny Salter got one stage point at the end of that stage. He has no front grip. It'll be four tires, fuel, and a track bar adjustment for Johnny Salter. Caitlin. Looking at the stage winner, Ryan Truex, in the middle of your screen. He says he's loose from center off in traffic. His crew chief, Scott Zibidelli, telling him to focus on coming into that pit box smoothly, which he just did. Chase Briscoe at the bottom of your screen in the 29 truck saying, my truck was too tight across the middle. They're going to go ahead and do four tires, fuel, and an air pressure adjustment as well for the 29. Ryan Truex's team does a great job. He's going to roll off pit road. 
just like he came to pit road. Just, takes, a, just as we thought, Matt Kraft will stay out and will, will inherit the lead here. Brandon Jones in that 99 didn't take tires there. They'd already pitted once before, picked up five spots. Let's check in with Ryan Truex after that big stage one win. Ryan Truex, it's Michael Waltrip up in the Fox booth. Big home court advantage here, and you knocked it out of the park. Good job there in stage one. Yeah, man, this is fun. It's, uh, it's been a while since I've seen the front this much. Um, I'm just so happy I can get Bar Harbor to see watch up here. You know, this, this team has been working so hard and, and putting in so much effort, man hours, and Shiggy's up on the box right now. I'm sure he's smiling. He's put in a lot of a lot of time and money and effort. Uh, you won't see a more dedicated team owner in the garage. So this is a team effort, man. I get to drive it, which is awesome, but these are the guys that are making it happen, and I'm just glad to hold the wheel. Well, you're holding a pretty wheel. Have a good day. Maybe we'll check in with you at the end of this, baby. Yeah, I hope so. That's the plan. <laughs> He was the first one off pit road. There you see the 16 crossing, but because of the varying pit strategies, Truex will restart 12 when we return. Back at Dover at the end of stage one, getting ready for stage two to begin. Ryan Truex was the stage one winner. Problems for Christopher Bell, however. Let's check in with Hermie. Good news, Vince, he's out of the care center. You started the season with the win in five consecutive top tens but a setback today what happened well under the yellow there I kind of feel it was starting to get a little bit squishy in my left rear uh, before it went green and then when we went green I could tell it was low but um, I apologize to everyone at at the KBM shop Kyle and, and all those guys they work really hard to build really fast tundras I had a really good JBL tundra today uh, I'm sorry to those guys I should have got it got it into to pit road there and got it fixed but uh, I felt like we could hold on we only had a couple more to the break and uh, didn't work out. That's Christopher Bale, Vince. You know, I wonder if Bell maybe ran over some debris when that uh, Cody Coughlin Stewart Friesen contact and issue had happened. Yeah, certainly possible because as he said, it, that thing was, I think it was low from the, the initial restart and it wasn't a rapid, rapid deflation or we would have seen this a couple laps before that. Great job by Brandon Jones working his way through that wreck. You saw him on the high side slipping by. Kyle Bush. Won the pole for the Monster Energy Cup race tomorrow, and there's—is that Todd Yolen's dad, David? It is. It up is. There on the box yep, as yep, well. Yep. I know where he lives. Yeah. Cheryl Ford. Ford, North Carolina. And there's a good look at Todd making his first Camping World Truck Series start. Well, what a year it's already been for him, right? He's won four of the six races in the K&N campaign this season. Yeah, it's been amazing, really. But stepping up in class here with the truck series tonight. But when he stepped in the K&N series, he didn't have much of a learning curve. Won his first race, I think won his first three races that he drove last year. One is a 15-year-old in ARCA, and he has... 15 years and two days. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> That's awesome. I love seeing these young kids show up ready to roll. Impressive resume at just 17 years of age. Right ahead of him is Haley, another... Yeah, just turned 18 a few weeks ago. Already has an ARCA Racing Series win at Talladega for this year. That's Justin Haley on the inside in the 24. Matt Crafton outside of the 88. Back racing. Stage two underway. Look at Haley drive that truck way down in the corner. Matt Crafton is a veteran, obviously. Series champion. He knows that the young kid's going to be aggressive. He needs to give him a little extra room. We and talked he does to, it. He gives up some room and drives around. We talked to Justin this morning. He was really uh, struggling in practice. He said yesterday they, they made a lot of changes. And it, so far, it looks like it may have helped. Yeah, his confidence was down a little bit as we talked to him. And boy, right there it is, running up there in the second position right now behind Matt Crafton while Gilliland and Cindric battle side by side. And Parker Klingerman in the 75 with Ross Chastain in the 66. All right there together. This is a fun race, man. These young kids versus the veterans and guys with established teams that have won races and teams that haven't been to victory lane ever before, all running toward the front. Truex in that white 16 was our stage one winner. Got back in traffic because of the varying pitch strategy, so restarted 12th. 
starting to work his way back up. He's gained a couple of spots, three in fact, since the restart. See Harrison Burton, the 51 truck, trying to make his way to the inside of Ross Chastain. That's the battle for the sixth spot. Cass Gralla, the 33 truck, follows this side-by-side -side battle. Gralla received his high school diploma today here in Dover, Delaware. And now he's running up inside the top 10. And you presented that to him, is that correct, Mike? Yeah, by the power invested me in the <laughs> Wooster Academy. <laughs> I don't know how official that actually was, but it felt good. It looked good. It was terrific, yeah. Parker Kligerman. Oh, whoa. Loose in that fit spot. I love this camera view from the bumper cam here. I love listening to the throttle. Listen as we go down to turn three, how little time he spends off the gas. He's not in the middle of the corner and already trying to feed it back wide open. But then pedaling, it looks like all the way off the corner. And that could be a result of, of having another truck right ahead of him. A little bit of uh, arrow push. That's when it's important to be able to figure out how to be versatile with your line. Run in the corner, maybe just slip up a half a groove, try a different line in order to make some ground. Remember that's Parker Kligerman, the 75 truck right now running in the fifth spot. Remember how high he went early on to make some gains. And they've rebounded from those uh, issues on pit lane at that very slow pit stop in between. As you look at Johnny Sauter trying to get around the outside of Chase Briscoe. The battle for the 14th position. Looks like Kligerman's going to work his way to the bottom and take that fourth spot away from Sendrick. Well, good battles all over the racetrack right now. Briscoe now gets inside of Sauter for that position. Johnny slips back to the 15th position. Remember, His Johnny was fourth at the end of stage number one. Well, in the winner of stage one, Ryan Truex, after pitting, came out 12th. He's only rebounded tonight, so that tells you how competitive the truck series is. Really tough to pass your way through the field. The 99 of Brandon Jones. We talk all the time about how these trucks will fire off speed-wise, and the crew chief said, Probably no more important here than anywhere here is you have to have that initial speed right after a restart because once everything settles down, you get in that arrow situation that make, makes it harder to pass. Matt Crafton qualified 13th, but told us after qualifying, don't worry, I've got a good truck. We're seeing it. He's the leader. So the new Ford F-150 with its high-strength military-grade aluminum alloy body just blew the doors off the competition. Now it's time to blow their tailgates off, too, by adding the new, more powerful, next-generation 3.5-liter EcoBoost engine and an all-new 10-speed transmission, cranking out more power and acceleration, more efficiency at the pump, and the most torque of any half-ton pickup. This is the Ford F-150. Boom. Hit the open road in style this summer with Camping World. For a limited time, choose from four of our best-selling travel trailers under 4,000 pounds for only $134 a month, including the Mallard M185, comfortable for the whole family. Or explore your outer limits in the Satellite 17RB. Plus, enjoy a good Sam Elite membership with every RV purchase. It's our lowest prices of the year, and it's only at your local Camping World Supercenter and online at CampingWorld.com. 
the shot. I'd like to say thank you to them that are watching at home and in the stands. Thanks to Lance Corporal Daniel F. Swain. I want to thank the Army, the Navy. Lance Corporal Scott Harper and the local VA. Master Sergeant Anthony Ray Charles Yost. Corporal John Harrison Keener, Jr. And Petty Officer Joshua Thomas Harris. I just want to thank the Marines. I'd like to thank the USO. I just want to thank the Air Force. And Lance Corporal Taylor Przinsky. Gracias. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. The land of the free because of the brave. Back at Dover. Just into stage two. Good battles all over the racetrack here at the Monster Mile. And while Matt Crafton leads, you get a good look at John Hunter Nemechek making the pass of Brandon Jones for 16th. Vince Jones has been falling back through the field. He uh, was up in the top 10 and just gets passed by everybody that catches him. Todd Gill in there in the third position has been able to hold off a fierce challenge from Parker Kligerman and now is beginning to gain on second place running Justin Haley. While this is all going on, Matt Crafton has opened up a five second wow. lead over Haley in second. But Haley's fixing to put the pressure on, or excuse me, Gillen on Haley. He closed on in on him in a hurry. Be interesting to watch the young kids battle. Can Gill and figure out, Hermie, a way to get around the 24 of Haley? Well, Michael, either way, the 24 of Justin Haley is having a good day and has overcome a little bit of adversity this weekend. Kevin Bellacourt, the normal crew chief for this truck, is not here this weekend. He's on a suspension based on the truck failing inspection after our last race. Now, that's Ryan McKinney on top of the pit box. He is the acting crew chief on this 24 truck. Here today, they're also missing the truck chief as well. So, and there he goes around for a spin, Michael. Yeah, that truck looked loose. Oh, it's and there's Haley from second place. The frustration of Ryan McKinney. Yeah, what what great strategy? What a great call he made to get them the track position. Put Haley up there toward the front. Justin did a great job of holding that track position but the truck had began to, to get loose. Be interesting to see if there's any contact or maybe he just pushes it. Yeah. He just got loose there in the center, trying to get the power down. We talked about how these guys will get the power down in the center of the corner and then have to actually pedal back off the throttle to make the exit. I was just too loose and he got up under me. I don't know if he touched me or not. You see, that's... I was curious of the same thing because so many times when you see a couple of trucks racing so close together, there is contact. And uh, with a loose truck that Haley was dealing with, the fact that Gillen got right on the back of him just uh, made him arrow loose and around he went. Well, we talk about uh, those kind of incidents and how so often here at Dover they end up collecting others. It's amazing that more weren't involved in this. Look at Gillen barely getting by without any contact of and, Haley. And Cindric was able to. Harvey Clearman was yeah. able to slip up the high side. You could see the chain reaction back there. They were still trying to crash coming off turn two. Herbie? Four. Yeah, you can hear the disappointment on the radio. The 24, Justin Haley, a good day. Now even more adversity. Now they got an issue with the air gun on the right rear. So this is going to take a while. Luckily, it's under caution, but a lot of damage to the front, especially the left front fender area. But this team are hoping to salvage what was a pretty good day, given all the obstacles they faced, Caitlin. The 51 truck of Harrison Burton. This is only his second start so far this season for Kyle Busch Motorsports. His crew chief asked, how's it going? He said, well, I'm still fighting the arrow, just trying to learn it. It was still a little bit tight. So they're going to go ahead and do a four tire stop for the 51, guys. Watching the crew work on that Toyota Tundra of Harrison Burton. Well, strategy is going to play into this. Yeah. Next. I'm a little bit surprised that all these guys took the opportunity to put tires on now. Giving up track position, which is so hard to get. Well, they I think they know they can just make it to the next break here in about 15 laps. Only thing I'm wondering is Crafton looked at his mirror, wanted to come into pit road two. He wouldn't have lost any track position. It's Ryan Truex, a stage one winner in that 16. Look what that mess he sees up in front of him. Oh, wow. How did. Jordan Anderson not lose that one truck and watch Truex now oh, off the road. Here's from Truex's bumper. This is going to be scary right here. A lot of patience here. You got the 18 back there. You Good see advice. What you got in front of you here. Outside three bottom here. 
outside 18. See, Jordan Anderson was trying to get Ross Chastain. At the bottom of the track. And then bottom the of the track coming back across. You see him. <laughs> if it wasn't enough that he was dealing with all the racing that was going on, he had to avoid a crash as well. He showed a lot of patience there, too. He got out of that throttle, get down in turn three when Jordan Anderson moved down to the bottom to give Ross Chastain room. This is interesting. These relatively short stages have really opened up the crew chief's playbook about when they come to, to pit road in order to get their tires and how their strategy can play out once the stages happen. And remember, three sets of tires in the pits when they started this race, if they put one on either right before or at state, the end of stage one and put their second on now, that only leaves them one more set of new set of tires in the pits for the next 125 laps. Yeah, remember stage one, 45 laps, we're done with it. Stage two, 45 laps, so that uh, leaves us 14 more to go in this particular stage, but stage three is 110 laps. A little different animal for these guys. Yeah, I'd like to have a set of tires yep. for, for that, for sure. You can see Ross Chastain, we talked earlier about his him having a battery issue. Looked like they're changing that battery. So what a great job by yeah. Todd Gillen to avoid Justin Haley. This is why we're under yellow and Ryan McKinney. Well, McKinney knew he did everything uh, right to get that track position for Haley, but the truck just got loose. You could see in a hurry, uh, Gillen closed right in on Haley and, and with him pressuring him from the rear, took some air off that big rear spoiler and around he spun. How about these two up in the front? You've got Matt Crafton, the two-time series champion on the outside in that 88, 40 years old. And on the inside, you've got uh, a driver in his very first truck series start in Todd Gilliland, who's 17 years old. About the wide range of experience between those two. Yeah, I think Matt Crafton made his truck series debut right around the time that uh, Harrison Burton was born. <laughs> Todd Gillen started his k and career with a win. What if he did it again in the trucks? That'd be quite a it story. It would be amazing. <laughs> well, he's right there. He's got good position right now with just 13 coming to 12 laps to go here in stage two. Gillen on the inside, Crafton on the outside. Ooh, a little spinning, spinning, spinning the tires by Gillen. Oh, and he's getting a bump from behind. That was Kligerman into the back of the 46. But Gillen does a nice job, clears Cindric on the outside. Chase Brisco drive hard into the outside, goes around Cas Brawla on the outside. Ryan Truex was on the inside. I bet you Cas thought he was running the outside. Briscoe started on the pole, but Truex jumped out at the start of the race and dominated early on. Briscoe trying to make his way back up to the front, as is Truex. And they know how important it is to make something happen right after the restarts. Especially with stage two getting ready to come to an end. Battling for championship points. Ten to go here in stage two. Battle for the ninth spot. Ben Rhodes, the 27, has ninth. Johnny Sauter, 10th. Remember, Johnny Sauter has scored points in every single stage this year. And right now, he's right at the at the end of the line to get points for this stage. Yeah, but he was all the way back in 15 earlier in this stage. Phil, he's been able to make some ground, so going in the right direction. In finger in the 98, that bright orange truck. He's currently in 12th. Harrison Burton just ahead of him. There's the 27 of Rhodes moving around Nemechek. But Rhodes up to the eighth position. He had fallen all the way back nearly outside the top 20, and now he's beginning to rebound too. Interesting race today. We got a lot of comers and goers. I guess differing strategies makes that happen. Be interesting to see what happens at the end of stage two. Yeah, we have a bunch of trucks right now running in the top 10 that last pitted on lap number 37. Remember, Matt Crafton pitted on lap 25 and the remainder of our top 10 pitted on lap 75. Coming to seven to go here in this stage. I think the brass at NASCAR hit a home run with these stage races because you get to see 
a variety of strategies and, and teams that take chances to score those stage points mixes up the running order. I don't think Matt Crafton pits on lap 25 if we don't have stage racing. No doubt. Great look at Crafton. Last year's race winner led 78 laps in this race en route to victory, but it's been more than a year since Crafton has won, and oh, how they would love to get back to victory lane. John Hunter Nemechek in the eighth. Sauter. Caution. Those guys no battling Sauter. for ninth Three and four. tenth, as you see, the caution is out. Jordan Anderson with some issues on his one truck. We saw him in a near miss crash earlier. Spun and hit the wall yesterday and during practice, and now he can't go anywhere. So rough trip to Delaware for the young man out of South Carolina. I think Matt Crafton again he pitted on a lap 25. I, I think he has to stay out to get to try to get the stage win don't you. Yes he does. I think that's what it was all about. But I also think that everybody else will stay out too, Phil. So so pitting here well, I don't think we're fine until it's uh, he said start smoking there. I, mean, I could tell it was losing power but it felt like it was a plug wire or something to be honest with you. All right push trucks coming here. So I oh there's a puff of smoke. Yeah generally a. Uh, Maybe a valve broke or something internally in the engine. What about Justin Haley hearing he's going to get the free pass? So yeah, not a lot of damage to that truck. Can he get back in the game? I don't think they they pit here, Phil. No, I don't think so either. Coming to one to go here. We're going to have a restart and a mad dash yeah, at the end are. of this second stage. It's going to be exciting. Oh, 75. Got some German. takers here. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, they're foregoing, foregoing the stage points to put themselves in a position to grab some spots when the others pit. But I think the majority of the field is going to stay out. We can certainly understand that for Parker Clickman does not run full time. But Chase Briscoe is a full timer here and he's given that up. Hermie what's going on with that 75. Well the crew chief from the 75 is veteran Chris Carrier. They're not really as concerned about stage points. They want to put themselves in the best possible position to try to win this race. Trucks a little bit on the tight side. Four tires struggling to make an adjustment on the right rear. Caitlin. Well, similarly, the 29 truck on the right side of your screen, of Chase Briscoe, they're fi mixing it up with some strategy as well. He was saying my truck was tight on that run. They're going to go ahead and do four tires fuel and air pressure for Chase Briscoe. What about the strategies here, guys? Well, we got some guys that pitted on lap 75. Ben Rose, Kaz, or excuse me, Harrison Burton, Johnny Sauter. I think all those trucks will stay out at the end of stage two. They will grab the track position at the very front of the field. The guys that pitted there will just be ahead of the ones they, are, they pitted with. Uh, and so I, I think there's not a big gain by pitting there because you'll be ahead of just a few trucks that are really fast anyway. But I understand what they're trying to do. Just mix it up. But because of the guys that pulled that strategy card on lap 75, it really makes the fact that they did it not that important. Yeah. How about Crafton's strategy? I love it. I like pitted on lap number 25. He's probably going to get this stage win if he can hold off Gillen, some of these other young drivers. And remember, he was running in 10th when they pitted at lap 25. He's led this race. He's got a real solid shot at winning this stage. They'll pit and try to figure out how to use strategy in the second half of this race to get back up there again. Crafton does not have any stage wins this season. And remember, a stage win brings with it a playoff point, And that's huge as you carry it on toward hopefully a championship that's in right. the playoffs. Matt Crafton has not yet won this year, so he doesn't automatically qualify for the playoffs as of yet. got to remember you keep those playoff points as you see the guys that have gotten stage wins this season Matt Crafton isn't on that list. Of course Kyle Busch and Chase Elliott not championship eligible but certainly valuable stage wins for Johnny Sauter and Christopher Bell. In fact Sauter has more playoff points or more uh, stage points I should say than anyone Bell with the most playoff points. Kaz Grala with some playoff points after that big win in Daytona. And you can see Kaz sitting there in the top five. A race win gets you five playoff points. And those are so valuable. You carry them all the way through to Homestead. You keep them forever like luggage. You hope. So Matt Crafton on the outside and Todd Gilliland on the inside. When they get the green, it'll be two to go in stage two. Really easy to spin tires when they're hot and pick up that debris under these cautions, but Matt Crafton does a good job jumping down to the bottom. But look at oh, Truex oh. gonna get second. Nearly cut 
the 46 of Gilliland off and bringing Ben Rhodes with him. Rhodes and Gilliland now battling for third. Rhodes is going to get it. You have to make it happen on these restarts. Final lap of stage two. Oh. Got and the caution the is out, and it's big. It's the 75 of Kligerman. A lot of damage to the eight of John Hunter Nemechek, too. I think I saw the 45 of TJ Bell maybe involved in that incident also. There's Heavy Nemechek. damage for Joe. Joe Nemechek's truck driven by his son, John Hunter. Crafton will get the, the stage win. So Matt Crafton's first stage win of the season, and there is Bell, as mentioned, part of that incident. That's the team that has had a number of different drivers this year, TJ being in it. Whoa, that's the oil that is coming out of that truck. Heavy damage on that eight of John Hunter. But that's that's part of the uh, the chances you take when you when you get off strategy a little bit. Parker Clickham, it's been up front this entire race, decided to use some pit strategy, which I thought was sound pit strategy because they're not racing for stage points, and uh, that put him in right in the middle of this. But Vince nailed it. He said it's going to be a wild shootout for this stage, and you can see just loose off the corner was John Hunter, and he collects. Parker Kligerman. Yeah, nothing Parker did wrong at all. And then bam. TJ Bell runs in to the spinning Kligerman. This looked like Nemechek just got loose there on the restart yeah. when he gassed it up. Well, we saw the same thing with Justin Haley when he was battling for the second position. You watch these trucks come off the corner and lap after lap and they're pretty solid look steady but they're right on the edge of being loose and spinning out every lap we also saw how one truck getting out of uh, shape can collect others i mean one truck got out of shape and what we got four of them involved here and it could have been even worse but nowhere to go i mean it's so hard to get past those incidents that's why gilliland uh, Evasive action earlier that I may come back to be a really big player yeah, with Haley. You're exactly right. Back to Dover for the final stage. Under caution here at Dover as you look at our finish to stage two and Matt Crafton getting his first stage win of the season. Johnny Sauter again. <laughs> Sauter scored. Stage points in every stage of this season. Every single one. Yep. That's why he's the points leader. You look right. at uh, what he has accumulated from a stage points perspective. Matt Crafton took that green and white checkered flag, signifying a stage win. So he'll carry a playoff point into the postseason via that stage win. Congratulations to Crafton. Well, they're coming your way, Hermie. Great run for Todd Gilliland in the 46 as he comes down pit road. This truck has been too loose, late exit. He's got Kyle Busch on the radio, a good truck underneath him, four tires and a track bar adjustment for the 46. The 88 of Matt Crafton, Junior Jordan says, no changes to my truck, is too good. Out front, the jack man slips, gonna hurt him getting back on the racetrack with no adjustments for the 88. Caitlin. Looking at the 16 truck, the stage winner from the first stage, Ryan Truex, he's just saying, I'm a little bit loose overall. They went ahead and put four sticker tires on fuel as well for Ryan Truex. We've seen several issues on pit road. We've seen guns malfunction. We've seen slow stops. We've seen Jackman having problems. Brandon Jones took advantage of that stumble by Matt Crafton's Jackman and grabbed a spot away from him. Let's see if we can talk to our stage two winner, Matt Crafton. Hey, Matt Crafton, Phil Parsons up in the Fox booth. You got a copy? Yes, sir. You got a copy. Well, how, how did that checker flag look to you there? Well, that's good. Finally get a segment win and lead a few laps. It's when our Toyota Tundra, we get her out front. I mean, they've got a lot of speed, so now we've got a little bit of work to do to get through these boys again. I love the strategy by you and Junior to bring you in early in that first stage and, and stay out front the entire time till the end of the second stage, but you're going to be back behind a few trucks, as you just mentioned. How does that truck act in dirty air compared to clean air? Oh, night and day difference, babies. 
a handful in dirty air and really, really good in clean air, but that's what we get paid to do, drive them in dirty air and clean air, right? Does uh, Junior have any magic for you to get that thing back up front with uh, and help you a little bit on pit road? He told me it's in my hands now. <laughs> All right, buddy, give her a ride. Thanks. Well, I've heard that a lot over the years out of my crew chief, too. <laughs> We'll take a look at this uh, final restart right before the end of stage two. Matt Crafton getting a little help from Ryan Truex. Hey, in a week, it's Friday night under the lights at Texas Motor Speedway as the Camping World Truck Series takes off. Don't miss it. It's going to be fun next Friday, 7.30 Eastern on FS1. We'll be at Texas Motor Speedway. Be fast there. Looking forward to it. Always enjoy going to the Lone Star State. Tough evening for Parker Kligerman, who's taken that 75 to the hauler after that incident involving Kligerman and John Hunter Nemechek. Our four track facts and a good one for Chase Briscoe started on pole. He's in top five, threatening maybe for his first career win. See, Kurt Busch got the win here back in 2000, his rookie year here in the truck series. Mark Martin had a terrific year in 2006 for Roush Fenway. There's Kurt in the conversation there with Junior Joyner. Hmm. Gonna add another lap here before we go back to green. How about Jesse Little and his evening, Caitlin? Well, yeah, he's pretty happy so far, Vince. Before that last cycle of pit stops, he said, we are better than that 88 of Matt Kraft, and I can feel it getting better throughout the run. We just need some clean air. So his crew chief responded and said, well, we're going to stay out because we made our bid already by pitting earlier, and he was one of those competitors that came and pitted on lap 75, guys. Right, that's a big old comfy bed, too, Caitlin. You look out that front window and see nothing but the pace car, put yourself in a really good position because, remember, Little started up front, but midway through this race, he was back in the back half of the top 15. Probably outside the top 15, yeah, wasn't he? I think so. And uh, he's been able to battle his way back into contention and uh, see if he can hang on here. This restart will be key. Ben Rhodes he has got a really fast truck as well. Yeah, really talk to me. Entry to center of one because it's really hard to see down there. The sun's right in your eyes. Simple. Copy that. Look at the back of that truck, Vince. Somebody's been beating and banging on it big time. And remember, he got really loose on the inside earlier. So it'd be interesting to see if he can keep that thing under control with that damage. How about Coughlin and the Jeg's truck with all that damage as well as Haley behind him that yep. spun out earlier? I mean, Coughlin in that three? Well, yeah, it was a 13, now it's a three. Back green, stage three underway at Dover. Ben Rhodes to the point. Briscoe could try to take that second spot away from Jesse Little. Jesse did a nice job. You could see the splitter dragging on the concrete. Just three wide again. Gregson was able to slip through there. Slip is right. Slip sliding through there. The 51 of Harrison Burton, and that's that Cody Coughlin banged up Toyota Tundra that. Uh, 13, that yellow truck that's only got one number on it now, right? <laughs> Johnny Sauter, the 21 blue and white trucks, trying to figure out which way they're going to go. He's hoping they settle this battle fairly quickly. This is a battle for the fifth position. Coughlin's doing a nice job up on the outside. So I think we see, saw a flip, a switch flip for Coughlin about Texas. He got out there, was really competitive, had some issues there, but had a fast truck and he was solid at Charlotte, didn't finish well, but he's been, excuse me, it was at Kansas, I think, when I watched that truck really start to come to life. So I know he's looking looking good today with the damage and running as well as he is. Yeah, I mentioned Michael Shelton, his crew chief, said he really was fast off the truck here and never had been to this place before. Got a little off. loose there. That's might open Ooh. the door for Burton. That's for fifth. Coughlin in fifth and Burton right behind him there for position. Johnny Sauter in the 21, and then the 18 of Noah Gregson. Did Matt Crafton top of your screen for just a moment. Matt's up to the ninth spot. He's leading the group that pitted on the most recent caution flag. Right behind Crafton, you see Kaz Grala. 
He's also on the Crafton strategy. Rallo won the season opener at Daytona, but still gaining experience and how valuable it is to just be knocking off laps here as they plan for maybe a playoff run late in the season as Todd Gilliland goes down underneath the 24 of Justin Haley for position. Yeah, that took over the 13th spot. There's Regan Smith, the 92 truck. We haven't talked a whole lot about Regan, but you know he's so rock solid steady and he's going to be up in inside the top 10 or 15. Got to give a shout out to Haley. Spun that truck out, hit the inside wall. The team were able to effect some repairs to it. And top 15, that's solid. We know these guys will all have to make another pit stop. Lap 94 was the most, the latest pit stop that anybody made, and that was on our most recent caution. For seventh place, boy, Gregson has had speed. Marcus Richmond has that 18 truck uh, tuned up this weekend. Yeah, he was really happy when I talked to him at last night after practice. That we just put some laps down, get towards the finish, and be in contention here for a good one. I, mean, I think Gregson's faster than Sauter, but it's so hard to get around, guys, even if you've got more speed here. It certainly is. Now, Matt Crafton is right up on the tailgate of Gregson in the 18. As soon as you slip, you look in your mirror and you got company. That's what happened to Gregson there. He was trying to run an al alternate line and see if he could gain on Sauter. Lost a little bit. Matt was right there. What did Matt restart? About 12th spot here on this most recent uh, restart. And he's up to the ninth spot right now. So not a whole lot of progress yet. Gregson continuing to take a look underneath the 21 of Sauter, but just can't quite get into position to make that pass stick. Johnny Sauter, pretty good at defensive driving, too. That guy's uh, defending series champion. He's been around. He knows how to make it tough on the guy behind him. He certainly does. Just a marvel at the fact that here we are in June, and he's been he's, he's made stage points in every single stage this year. Really struggled in that corner right there and lost some, lost some momentum and it's going to allow Gregson to get to his outside. It's got to lead you to believe that truck's really tight. Sounded like he just couldn't get the front end to stick and when you lose front traction it just seems to multiply here at Dover. You start sliding those front tires and you can't make any progress. Gregson worked Sauter for several laps before finally Sauter slipped up and Gregson moves into that seventh spot as you look now at the 66 of Ross Chastain trying to make his move up toward the front a little bit better. Here Ross is being shown one lap down. He's trying to stay in that yep. position to be the highest scored non lead lap truck to get the free pass should the caution come out. Well I'm becoming a fan of his as we watch from the 16 truck of Ryan Truex because I, I like running that high line. I like trying out different grooves. I don't want to hear about an arrow push for my driver until he's tried to run up high or in the middle of the track somewhere where the guy he's chasing isn't. Looking out the front bumper of Ryan Truex, who's running 12th. As mentioned, that truck just in front of him, Ross Chastain, a lap down, trying to be in that free pass position. I tell you, these trucks up front are running some fast lap times. Ben Rose just ran a 23.68. That's only about six, seven tenths of a second off our pole speed from earlier this afternoon. Rhodes, the leader there in the 27. How about we've got one truck in the top seven that has a truck series win, and that's Grant Enfinger. Currently this, running fourth. This kid served notice at Kansas. He was going to be in victory lane this year, and he's hauling right now, driving away from the field. Ben Rhodes leads at Dover. Every lap time to a hundredth of a second. Every gallon measured down to the last drop. Every tire holding till its last tread. Each moment building with pressure. But no matter the precision put into a car or a race, the path to victory is through total chaos. Unbelievable.
sorry about the hold up, folks. We have some congestion on the runway, and I'm being told it'll be another 15, maybe 20 minutes, and we will have you on your way. Runway models on the runway? Surprising. What's not surprising? How much money Evan saved by switching to Geico. I would not wear that lace. <laughs> I don't know. 15 minutes could save you 15% or more. What goes around comes around. And as a sport that races in laps, we know that a clean race pays off in the finish. It's why NASCAR commits to green programs and biofuel like Sunoco Green E15 so we can offset our carbon emissions. We're not going to stop making a difference, and neither should you. Learn how you can help by visiting nascar.com slash green today. Get closer to the action like never before with NASCAR Race Hub on FS1. At the track. Looks like Superman 1. In the shop. Catching up with Joey Logano. On the headsets and behind the scenes. Every night, the place to be. All season long. Here's the story from the drivers who lived it. That's how tough the track was to drive. And get the ultimate setup from the legends of the sport. You can't script it. There's certain things out of your control. NASCAR Race Hub. Weeknights at 6 Eastern on FS1. Well, as you've seen in our side-by-side -side coverage, a problem for Todd Gilliland in the 46. He's come to pit road. That's brought out the yellow, and a few have decided they're going to try to take advantage. Yeah, Grant Enfinger, you see that top of our screen, that bright red truck was the... Uh, he's already looked like he broke a spindle or something like that when he came to pit road. He may have made some minor contact with the outside wall, but, but yeah. something broke on the right front suspension on that truck. It wasn't a wreck that caused the suspension failure it was a suspension failure that nearly caused the wreck that's a shame too because Todd Gilliland had been having a very impressive debut here in the Camping World Truck Series it's going to be fun to watch him run his truck races this year as he also continues to run full time in the K&N series debriefing with team owner Kyle Bush there just in front of him dad David to the right Some crew guys talking about what he learned what he felt also earlier Parker Kligerman was involved in an incident. He's been released from the care center. Hermie. Yeah, Vince, this is really what's fun about the truck series. Sometimes a smaller team comes together and puts together a great effort. You guys qualified top 10. You got up on that high side and started digging. Have you run up there before this weekend or just kind of by accident, but you were passing trucks left and right. Yeah, that high side, I've been up there before and it just, it's a combination if it lays, the tire lays enough rubber, you can get up there and just fly. Maybe I learned something watching Kyle Larson the last couple of years, but uh, you know, unfortunate for everyone on this Food Country USA Tundra because as you said, as a small team, we brought a really good piece and uh, we had winning speed. We just couldn't hold any positions on pit road. So that made it a little tough, but we'll, uh, oh yeah, you see there the eight, whatever went down there. I don't know, he lost it under, I don't even know who was on the outside. and. It was hard to avoid him, I guess, but unfortunate, you know, just we don't always have that kind of speed. Winning speed is one of the best trucks I've had in a long time, but if we can do it once, hopefully we can do it again. We'll fix pit road, and hopefully my buddy uh, Ryan Trix can go win this race because this is a home track, and I think about half the grandstands here for him. That's Parker Kligerman done for the day. Well, and he mentioned Ryan Truex. Currently, Truex is in ninth. He's led almost 50 laps tonight. Expect him to be one of the contenders down the stretch, and how about this young man, Jesse Little, currently second. Uh, not late, but kind of right in the middle there that last time. And I just spun up the split second and wasn't able to uh, get the launch, but I'm going to try to uh, angle it different and kind of drive straighter and not tied up right next to him. I think that'll be better. And you know, Vince, you talk about, we heard Parker Kligerman talk about his small team. This is the definition yeah, of a small team. the epitome of a small team right here. They have one truck. They build that truck in his dad's garage in rural North Carolina. Jesse Little helped bolt it together, put it together. They haul it off somewhere to, to pull down the suspension. They take it somewhere else to do a little chassis dynoing, and uh, they've made it work on the front row for this restart. And, you know, some might be asking, okay, they're within their fuel window. Why would you just go ahead and pit now and get that track position? They've got one set of tires remaining, but you guys like the thought of holding on to them for a little longer anyway. Yes, huh? some of the guys, though, from, a, from about 10th on back decided that that was going to be the time to do that, but... Uh, 
you know, some of these guys also decided to stay out here. Matt Crafton was one of those guys that decided to stay out. He's right now in the seventh spot. It's nearly split in the middle about who did what during this caution. Real quickly, Caitlin on Truex. Well, the feedback he's giving right now, Vince, it's not as good in dirty air, that truck, and he has a vibration under braking. So his crew chief, Scott Zipidelli, said, let them cool down. You're getting them too hot. So, Phil, how do you actually cool those brakes down when you're using them so much in race conditions? Yeah, just back off a little bit early, Caitlin, and coast in the corner. But, you know, sometimes that's hard to do when you're in heavy traffic. But after a few laps after the restart, you should be able to do that. And we do restart with Ben Rhodes getting out. Looked like Jesse Little spun the tires and Rhodes jumps out to the point. Jesse got a good break there because the 13 trucker Cody Coughlin didn't get a great start either. He was able to clear him. Here's Chase Briscoe, our pole winner, lurking in third. A couple of KBM trucks. The 51 of Burt and the 18 of Gregson both have shown good speed here this evening. Whoa! Cas Grala bounced off the wall. He and Matt Crafton were racing together. Not sure if there was some contact or not, or else maybe Cas got loose, but he bounced off the wall coming off turn four. Crafton up into the seventh spot now. Didn't hurt Cas's truck too bad, it doesn't look like he was able to heat up Ryan Truex exiting turn two there, so. Get your attention at about 155 mile an hour. Yeah, it does. <laughs> well, especially when you've had a pretty good truck and a guy like Matt Crafton pulls right up on your tailgate, gets you a little bit loose and into that outside wall, certainly gets your attention, Vince. There's Justin Haley. We saw him spin earlier tonight. The team repaired and got him back out there. He's up in the 12th spot, battling the 98 of Grant Infinger for that position. Brandon Jones in the 99 right behind them as we go back and look at the 18 of Noah Gregson getting by Kaz or uh, Cody Coughlin. Yeah, I don't think that's somebody that we can discount with a, a potential winner is that Noah Gregson. Now that 18 truck, but there's our second place battle right there. See Harrison Burton down to the inside of the truck of Cody Coughlin. Cody's falling back right now. A lot of damage to that truck. Might have used up his tires trying to hold that track position. There's Truex around Crafton. These guys still have a set of tires laying in the pits. Be interesting to see if track position or new tires went out. Coughlin looks like he's going to lose another position. You see the damage on that 13 truck as Truex goes inside of him and Matt Crafton is coming along to challenge. Yeah, Cody's really done a good job with that truck as much damage as it has we well, did a great job getting through that crash too mm -hmm. it's been a solid run for cody so crafton moves up into the seventh spot i'm gonna try to bring Cas Grala along with him that's Cas the 33 truck there's johnny Sauter behind Cas. johnny's the first guy that pitted on the most recent caution flag so johnny's in a pretty good spot track position wise when the guys in front of him come to pit road. Well, when there's one that's wounded, like the 13 of Coughlin, and you see him slip up and give a couple of positions, <laughs> everybody wants some of that. Oh, they? yeah, oh, yeah. On board with Austin Sendrick there for a moment as you got a good look at some of these battles on track. How old's our top five, Phil? I think Chase Briscoe right now at 22 is the oldest of anybody in our top five. How crazy is that? That's awesome. See these kids come out here and show that they've got what it takes to get it done on the super speedways of NASCAR. Sauter inside of Grala now for ninth. The first of these people that are doing their you can't keep trying to stay there. We can't keep taking it easy. All right, that's what I'm saying. We're first of the people that are on that strategy, so we got to stay there. Wow. All right. You can save a lap. Yeah. We saw people save seven laps in the Coke 600 <laughs> last week. You can get a lap out of it. Yeah, we got 70 to go. You got to believe we're going to have another caution. Right. They're going to be able to save plenty, right? And, and that's Joe Shear talking about exactly what we were talking about, the fact that he's the guy, the highest running guy right now that pitted just now. Well, we saw the 46 go to pit lane and Todd Gilliland climb out. Hermes with him now. Yeah, Vince, I can only imagine the emotions you've been on for the last... 30 or 45 minutes, a shot maybe to win. Now you're in the garage. What happened to your truck? Yeah, we were sure right there. Um, you know, the whole center of the wheel was broken out. We probably had loose lug nuts, something I definitely should have felt. Um, you know, came in, not destroyed a truck, but 
Uh, I can't thank Pedigree, Toyota, TRD, um, all of Kyle Busch Motorsports for having me a fast truck. Uh, pitch strategy, we played it right there. Uh, you know, we just wanted to make it to the end. And, uh, you know, it, it kind of stinks to finish like this, but um, you know, I learned a ton. I got to restart on the front row. Um, you know, all stuff that's very, very valuable to, to move on for. When do you think we'll see you again in this series? Uh, I'll be back at Gateway in the 51 uh, Pedigree Toyota Country. It's going to be fun to watch this kid, Vince. Look forward to it. You think that's a good family pedigree there? Nice. I like how that you worked that in there. Yeah. Well done. Yeah. yeah. See what you did there. Yeah. You're going to be here all week. <laughs> Appear yeah. He's appearing weekly. <laughs> <laughs> Very weekly. <laughs> he sounds a lot like his dad, though, doesn't he? He does. I, that's just going to be a fun story to watch. You talk about the, the youth movement and all these kids that are running up front. You can add his name to the list of potential winners when he drives that truck for Kyle Busch. On board with Cody Coughlin. That's Austin Sindrick looking inside for the pass. Watch Into the him. top ten. Watch him work that wheel down on the inside of Coughlin. These guys are just tiptoeing when they're side by side in the corners. Brandon Jones getting to the inside of the 24 of Haley. Yeah, Jones is trying to race up into the 13th position and Phil, he nearly crashed. And we saw Gregson get sideways up in the corner. He was able to barely slip by. So everything he's doing now is a bonus because of that great job he did avoiding that accident. Yeah, and it's been a tough go for that 99 team the last uh, couple of weeks. They had uh, crashed vehicles at Kansas and Charlotte. And Really just trying to keep their head above water here, trying to get to this race and uh, and bring a good piece. But it's a small team, and oh, and you wreck trucks, and then you got to rebuild and get to the next race. It's a stress on a small team, and the 99's done a good job of uh, doing just that with Shane Huffman as crew chief. This Look team, Ben is, Rhodes, the leader. He's certainly been impressive this year, hasn't he, Vince? Ben Rhodes nearly won at Kansas. Some debris and then an engine that let go cost him the win. This is the most laps he's ever led in a race. Back to the Monster Mile for the NASCAR Camping World Truck Series. Dover, Delaware, getting close to 50 to go, and it doesn't take long when you're on a mile at 150 some mile per hour to click off 50 laps. On board with Ryan Truex in that 16. I love that view from his front bumper. And there's our leader. Don't look now, but it's been about 70 laps since the two guys running up in the first two spots. Ben Rhodes, Jesse Little have been to pit road. There's Ryan Truex right there. Ryan pitted on lap number 94, so he has about 20 more laps of fuel than those two trucks running one, two have. And, uh, and so they're probably, I know we've had some caution laps, but. They can't be more than about 10 or 15 laps away from having to come to pit road. And Phil, in our top 10, we've got three different strategies. <laughs> guys that pitted at lap 75, guys that pitted at lap 95, and then guys that pitted on lap 118. So it's all over the board. But I'm telling you, as we begin to creep toward our fuel window, this is going to get interesting. Yes, it is. If okay. these guys have to make green flag pit stops, Vince, though, it could, it could be the end of their good run. Good look at Jesse Little in that second position. Last pitted on lap 75, so he's going to have to come again. Some have made their final pit stop, or at least come on, put their final set of tires on their trucks. Yeah, and I don't think we'll see Matt Crafton come to pit road again because he's not going to give up the track position that that strategy afforded him. I mean, I'm sorry, Johnny Sauter, who I was talking about, not Mike, Matt Crafton. Johnny is the leader of the guys that pitted on lap 118. And Sauter is currently in that eighth position, so you believe all of those seven in front of Sauter all have to come again. Without a doubt yep. they do, for sure. And as well as Kaz Grala, who's right now behind Johnny Sauter. Ben Rhodes, we told you just before the break, he's led 55, and he's never led more in his career. It's another great night for that 27, Hermie. So far, so good. You guys talking about fuel. I just spoke to Eddie Traconis, the crew chief on the 27. Between laps 170 and 173, you'll see the 27 on pit road if we don't have a caution before the end. Yeah, 
Yeah, that's a long way. He's, he's counting on all those caution laps, saving fuel. And I'm sure Ben, once he went back on the racetrack under caution, was saving fuel as much as he could. And during the caution laps, because that's almost 100 laps here, we talk about our pit window being 80 to 85 laps of green flag racing. We could stretch it out with the time we spent under under caution, but that's pretty ambitious. Yeah, and Phil, if you think he can, if he thinks he can make it 170 to lap 173, think about Matt Crafton. He's got 19 more laps of fuel in his 88 truck. Does he try to start letting off and saving that gas and see if he can stretch it all the way to the finish? Remember, he shocked us before by how much fuel he can save and go and, and went to victory lane doing it. Austin Sindrick doing a nice job in that 19 truck for Brad Kozlowski. Sindrick running 10th, just 18 years old. And how about Grant Infinger right behind him? When we came here for this race last year, Infinger was the mechanic on the truck. He wasn't even <laughs> driving. Well, that's what I love about the Jesse Little story up in second place. He's the mechanic on that truck today, and yet he's able to get up there and run like that. That's awesome. Good look inside Sindrick's Ford. Austin's continuing with his good st string of good races started with that top 10 at Kansas here comes Jesse Little the pit road already Caitlin is awaiting the 20 year old Jesse Little who pits from second place yeah Vince and it's been a strong day for him his first truck start all year long but we heard the conversation between him and his crew chief for a while that they were going to need to pit for fuel and four tires as well for the 97. It's about 20 laps sooner than what uh, Ben Rhodes' crew was talking about pitting. Well, I think, like you, Phil, that that number that Eddie Draconis threw out there to us, that's ambitious. I don't know that they can go that far. Oh, it stalls the truck. That's a mistake. Hopefully, it'll fire back off. Boy, losing positions under green here. Can they get it started again? No, it doesn't look like it. Is that fire? Oh, and the 13 of Cody Coughlin. Don't speed here. Don't speed. All your green. All, all your green. All the Tough break for Coughlin, too. He was trying to pit, and the uh, the truck of Jesse Little was in Coughlin's box. That's bad timing. And when they called him to the pit road, they assumed that, that Jesse Little was going to be gone. They didn't realize that he was going to stall the truck and be in their pit when he got there. <laughs> Noah Gregson comes to pit road. Another one of those trucks that pitted on lap 75. Same lap Ben Rose pitted. Boy, none of these uh, stops under green. You can ill afford mistakes on pit road. Caitlin waiting on the 18 of Noah Gregson. Yeah, Noah telling the team, my exit is tight and so is my entry. They're going to go ahead and do four tires and fuel as well as the air pressure adjustment for the 18 of Noah Gregson. Kyle Busch Motorsports crew going to work doing See. their business in the 51 right behind them of, uh, of Harrison Burton. Yeah, they were on the same strategy, and this is way earlier than we heard the 27 team of Ben Rhodes say they were coming. I know Matt Crafton, a lot of the guys that pitted on lap 94 will be next in line. Here comes Ryan Truex. Truex did pit on lap 94, and he's already to pit road. Yeah, I think right now if this race goes green, and then obviously Matt Crafton's in the driver's, I mean, Johnny Sauter's in the driver's seat, Caitlin. Yeah, taking a look at Ryan Truex on the right side of your screen. One of the dominant trucks all day long, going for four tires, fuel, and air pressure adjustment as well as the call for the 16. You know, and in the truck series, some of these teams have, uh, as we take a look at the replay here, trying to get down on pit, oh man, trying to get down on pit road, Ryan Truex. Yeah, you have to have all four tires below that orange box block there that's just inside the racetrack. Well, folks, uh, tuning in here at 7.30 in the east, if you're looking for NHRA qualifying from New Hampshire, hang with us immediately following our Truck Series race here at Dover. We'll get you out to New Hampshire for NHRA qualifying. It's coming up next right here on FS1. But don't go away because, man, we've got a thriller. 40 to go here at Dover. And there's pit stops for the leaders. And we just saw from Ryan Truex, this is the most difficult pit road to get on in all of NASCAR. They go into that third turn running close to 170 miles an hour, have to peel off at turn four and get it down to pit road speed. That's real tough. And the teams that have the best pit crews, that's going to be really important as we see these oh, green yeah. flag pit stops. And cannot make any mistakes. You can't speed on pit road. You can't do, you can't stall it on pit road. 
Right now Johnny Sauter is only 10 seconds behind our leader Ben Rhodes and we feel like Johnny is good to go to the end of the race. If this race goes green I, I don't think there's anybody that has a shot at Johnny Sauter. And then she talked about the importance of a pit crew but the driver has to do his part. Getting on pit road obviously is highly important. But we also saw when Truex made his stop he was really close to that inside wall. Slid into his pit, got too close to the wall. That can really hamper the crew. So it's definitely a team effort in order to get this pit stop done properly. We saw Truex go around Crafton. Crafton has yet to pit. Ben Rhodes has been out there right now for 88 laps. We're getting a report that he may be getting close to heading to pit road. There, next time on. That sounded like Eddie. Tyler, we're going to pit this time. Make sure you do not overshoot that entry. Tires okay. are going to be greasy. Get your hand out the one window. One outside. One outside. Clear. Pitting this time. Nice and smooth. No mistakes. Yeah, let those guys behind you know that you're coming it's to pit road. It's going to be 3,300 seconds. Three red. 3,300 seconds. Three red. Right up here at the yellow. Nice and easy. Now there that, speed there. That was nice. He did that really fast and really under control. Now let's see if he can get in his box like he needs to. Herbie Sadler awaits Ben Rhodes, who, boy, it's got to feel like you're just down to a crawl, down to 35 mile an hour, Herbie. Yeah, these guys have played their cards right so far. Been a great day for this team. So close to winning. They just preached no mistakes on this pit stop. They've seen other teams either driver mistakes or issues with stuff on pit road, but four tires, they did not wait on fuel. Stalls the truck a little bit, but he's down on the way. Now he's got to exit properly. We did a great job getting in. So the exit's interesting because you got to stay at pit road speed. And as soon as you hit that end line, you got to haul as fast as you can on that flat apron down there. And that's a challenge. Look at all the speedy drive down there. Now Matt Crafton is in, Hermie. His truck is tight. He really liked it out front, but it was not as good in traffic. The truck was spread around on the racetrack right now. Four tires, fuel, and the air pressure adjustment for Matt Crafton. Left side of the street. That's our leader, Chase Briscoe. He pitted on lap number 86. He's coming this time as well. Over 90 laps on that load of fuel. That's too fast. Too oh, fast. Yeah. He's going to be speeding, I think, in that first section. Yeah, you could tell before, well before he tried to turn onto pit road, he had a lot of speed there. Caitlin awaits the 29 of Chase Briscoe, who won the pole for the first time in his career earlier today and was bidding for his first career win. Yeah, and he's been poised really all day for a strong run. He's been running in the top five for most of the day. They two are going to go ahead and take four tires and fuel for the 29 of Chase Briscoe. Well, and with Briscoe coming to pit road, that leaves that truck there on the left hand side, driven by Johnny Sauter as our leader, as everyone has cycled through for the most part. And that leaves just as you indicated earlier when Sauter was running in the eighth spot, Phil. You said when everyone pits, Johnny Sauter's going to be in the catbird seat. Yeah, watch this. This is Chase coming to pit road. And the speed line start from yellow line to yellow. It starts at the yellow line, ends at the yellow line. I'll be shocked if that wasn't speeding there for. Whoa. Uh -oh. That's going to bring a caution out more than likely. Just as we were talking about potential issues on pit road. Yeah, that couldn't have went any worse for the 29 team. No. Be fine here, buddy. Taking them. Can we pit this tire stay out? Cars is out. Pit, pit. Well, it's gone from bad to worse for that 29 group, as you saw Mike Hillman Jr., the crew chief. Don't know if they had any issues or obviously they didn't get the lug nuts on that left front tire whether it maybe fell off the jack. Normally when you drop the jack that's the driver's signal to go. Just grinding the sway bar arms off. Let's see if we can take a look at what happened here. See the jacks it up now putting the left left front tire on. Never to get it had never has gotten it indexed oh, yet. Yeah. Dropped the jack and he never even started putting lug nuts on the left front. Yeah. Looked like they had trouble getting it on. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. They never even attempted to put one lug nut on that that wheel. You could see the jack man was looking back at the rear, checking out closely what they were doing. And when he looked up front, he saw the tire in there and just dropped it. And that was obviously too quick. We're only showing seven trucks right now on the lead lap. What about our man Kaz Grala on the day of his high school graduation? Jerry Baxter pulled a strategy call, left him on the racetrack. He's one of the guys on the lead lap. Coming out pit road right now for Kaz Grala. He's going to give up second spot. And he's going to have fresh tires 
and in a really good spot. And, and just a few trucks on the lead lap, so that's going to be great positioning for Casparala. On the right-hand side of the screen, that's that 29 of Briscoe, making sure they get that left front on. 27 of Ben Rhodes gets the free pass with that caution. Grala is out. Ben did a great job on his pit stop. He was only one lap down. Several of our trucks that pitted were two laps down after their pit stop. So Ben Rhodes is going to be in position here with a free pass. Hey, remember back at uh, at Atlanta, the 29 of Chase Briscoe. Remember this? Yeah, see him crossways in his box here. Lugnut flew off. Remember we saw that issue with the left rear. Mike Kilman Jr. down chatting with his pit crew. This is only being shown one lap down. We don't know how much damage it did, but running that lap. You know what? Usually it's the sway bar, Michael, that uh, that is the lowest thing on that thing and usually grinds the sway bar arm off. Don't go anywhere. It's going to be exciting right to the end at Dover. Oh, it's going to be fun to the finish coming to the restart and there will be 25 to go with Johnny Sauter on the outside. Grant Enfinger inside racing at Dover. Those trucks behind that front row all have 50 less laps on their tires than our front do. And Kaz has already grabbed the second spot. Johnny Sauter pitted at lap 118. Kaz Grala pitted at 172. Are the tires that big of a difference? We're about to find out. I say yes. I think Kaz Grala, some of those guys that just got those fresh tires are going to eat Johnny Sauter up. I don't think they're going to do it, Michael. I, don't, I think clean air is going to be king here. Keep your eye on that 27 truck. We know how fast he's been all day. He got the free pass started back, but he's working his way through the field. Oh, Haley and Austin Sindrick might have touched. That opens up the door for Harrison Burton, the 51 truck to get by. But Harrison's two laps down right now. Matt Crafton's being shown one lap down. And he's battling for that free pass that's currently in the hands of Noah Gregson. Just a couple of trucks ahead, so these guys are going to be battling hard to try to grab that free pass. Another spot for Rhodes. Yeah, that's the guy we got to keep an eye on there. Remember, Truex is also a lap down. Right, because of the different pit sequences, we only have, and the way that yellow fell, we only have eight trucks on the lead lap. Very unusual, but those are those, those are the drivers that are. Uh, just beyond that mark are trying to fight for that free pass if we get another yellow and right now Noah Gregson is in that position in the 18 truck. There's our leader Johnny Sauter Kaz Grala. Big win at Daytona. Graduated from high school today and now is challenging at Dover to get a win. That 27 truck of Ben Rhodes that's the guy to keep an eye on. He's shown the speed today. He's got 40 some laps less on his tires than Johnny Sauter does, but Johnny has the clean air. Here comes Johnny Sauter, defending series champion. Camping World 20 to go as he seeks his first win of the season. Okay, if the caution were to come out, then all bets were off. Right now, I give the advantage to Johnny Sauter. I give the advantage to Kaz Grala, and you think that if there's a caution, maybe it's going to be Ben Rowe. Yes. Ben Rhodes right now inside of two seconds behind. Kaz Grala was the fastest truck on the racetrack that last lap. Well, one thing that the crew chiefs have talked about is they haven't seen a lot of fall off from these tires. It's not been significant enough that it would be more important than track position. And we're seeing that play out right now. We're going to get the answer to it here as uh, Johnny Sauter tries to hold off Kaz Grala, Hermie. He admits there was some discussion between Joe Shear and Johnny Sauter. They had a set of 23 lap scuffed tires sitting in their pit box. Only four trucks on the lead lap at the time. They discussed for a brief second, should we come get these tires at least a little bit newer and a little bit cooler? They decided with the input of Mike Bean, general manager at GMS, to stay on the racetrack, put their money on clean air, and so far, the 21 is holding his ground, but 33 
He is coming. Oh, boy, that's for sure. Kaz Grala is chewing up Johnny Sauter, Mike. And remember, that truck of Grala was into the outside wall off turn four. Got sideways racing with Matt Crafton. Got a piece of the wall. And, Phil, I think right now, if I'm Kaz a spotter, he's got a bit of a gap behind him. I'm going to ask him to move around on the racetrack a little bit. See if those new tires, newer tires, will stick in the high lane. We know how important having clean air on the nose of that truck is. And right now, he's just riding in the tire tracks of Sauter. I know he wants that bottom, but I'd ask him to practice a little bit. Run up maybe a half a groove up. Because Sauter's not going to get off the bottom. Right, I mean, Craig Growler is going to have to pass him up high. Well, Sauter's, I think, savvy enough if Kaz was to go to the outside and make some ground up. Johnny would probably go up there and try to block it as well. But, I mean, obviously, Kaz right now has a faster truck, but Johnny has so much experience. There you go. Keep it buried on the bottom. Bury it on the bottom. Perfect. 15 to go. That's perfect. Remember, Kaz Grala has already made the playoffs by virtue of that win at Daytona. Johnny Sauter has not won yet this year. Both these trucks come from the same stable, GMS Racing. Kaz Grala in second place, just 18 years old, and he's chasing Johnny Sauter, the 39-year-old defending series champion. And he's chasing him with fresher tires and a whole lot of enthusiasm. Remember, NHRA qualifying coming up immediately following our Truck Series broadcast here from Dover. All these young drivers tell me how invaluable Johnny's experience is to them. They help him. Justin Haley, Cass Grawler. Johnny's an open book. He'll help them absolutely any way he can. Now, he doesn't want to give them this win, but and he wants to see them do well. And also, you can see coming from behind, there's Grant Enfinger. He's made his way up to the tailgate of Cass Grawler, and there's... Cindric and Brandon Jones. I mean, there's trucks coming. Yeah, you, you see the black truck behind Enfinger. That's Enfinger, the, the red and black truck. That's Noah Gregson, who's one lap down, trying to stay in position to get the free pass. It's behind him where we see the 27 of Ben Rhodes. And the last four or five laps, Rhodes has been significantly faster than our battle for the lead. And you can see Saunders has been able to figure out a way to drive away from Grala. Yeah, that lead almost up to seven tenths of a second now as Sauter starts to stretch it out. I just like the experience of Johnny Sauter and the clean air that that 21 truck has. At this point, the last thing Johnny Sauter wants is a yellow. He wants this one to stay green as he continues to build his lead toward his first win of the season. Johnny Sauter, the fastest truck on the racetrack that last lap, two tenths of a second faster than Cass Grala was. That's because you can see Rhodes has caught this pack and he's losing that clean air off the nose of the 27 truck. He goes to the inside of Gregson there. Oh, a couple of teammates. Oh, let me check that. Yeah, 27 is Rhodes. He needs that spot. He's going to get it. Now he can go work on the third place truck of Grant Enfinger. This baby isn't over yet for Ben Rhodes. And that white truck behind Gregson, remember, that's a battle for the free pass spot. Yeah, but I don't think Rhodes has got enough time. I mean, we're under 10 laps to go. It's going to be close. I agree. It's going to be John close. Johnny Sauter was in the driver's seat the whole time with that strategy. Well, it wouldn't have been any fun to agree with you. <laughs> <laughs> you, hey, you never have, anyway. Why start now? <laughs> exactly. Eight. Eight. What do you think? You think the, the rookie, Grala, had enough experience to cool his tires off for a couple of laps? We saw him fall back away from Sauter. Now here he comes again. Jerry Baxter's a smart, savvy crew chief. That's what I was going to say. He's got a lot of experience on the pit box with Jerry Baxter, but there's a lot of experience on the pit box of that 21 with Joe Shear, our champion crew chief from last year. Hey, in three of our five races this season, the final lead change has occurred in the last seven laps. We've got seven to go right now. I don't, I don't, gosh. Johnny Sauter's just so good and so experienced. Last time by, Rolla just a tick faster than Sauter. Ben Rhodes again the fastest truck. But he's a, almost a second half behind, Vince. Johnny Sauter continues to click them off as Kaz Gralla, his teammate, chases him. Did I mention before this race started, Johnny Sauter had never led a lap here at Dover? I, I, you definitely mentioned it. <laughs> and he's put that in his rearview mirror. What great pit strategy, though. Whatever happened, that's Joe Shear right there, right side of your screen. We heard him say on the radio, remember, 
we're the leader of the guys that pitted on our cycle. You got to stay in front of them. All that's off the window now. He just has to stay in front of his teammate, Cass Growler. And Michael, maybe you're right. Yep. He's coming. Here comes Growler. Five to go. And Growler has Still closed. All good. Keep doing what you're doing. Remember, it was almost seven tenths of a second, and now that lead down to two tenths of a second. And look where Growler's truck is right down on the low part of the track. Back up that entry a little more. He's backing up his. I think catching solder is one thing, passing him is another. Well, that's what they put bumpers on trucks for. I know <laughs> these are teammates, but this is an 18-year-old high school graduate. Graduate as of today. <laughs> I'd hate to try to slow him down, would you, Phil? I would. Sauter and Gralla, three to go when they cross the line. Johnny Sauter trying to get his first win of the season, trying to hold off his teammate, the 18-year-old Kaz Gralla, who opened the year with a win at Daytona. I don't see Kaz Gralla going up there and knocking Johnny out of the way. I just don't see him doing that. God knows we're coming. You're fine. That's perfect. Johnny's had to run so many perfect laps here to stay in front of that 33 truck. Yeah, and by the way, Phil, you got to look out the windshield and make All these corners, even though you're just dying to look in the mirror to see where that other truck is. But his spotter is doing an excellent job keep, keeping Johnny informed about what Kaz is doing behind him. Yeah, he's going to let Tad Boyd worry about what's, what's, what's behind him right now. Sauter through three and four with Kaz Gralla still. Just two tenths. One more. Perfect corner. Behind final lap of the race at Dover and Johnny Sauter less than a mile away. What an outstanding job Johnny Sauter, Joe Shear, and that entire team have done to get to this point. Johnny Sauter is going to do it. The defending series champ Sauter is going to get his first win of the season. He tames the monster at Dover. You guys, wow! I'd rather be lucky than good at any day. Thank you. Good job, guys. Good job, man. Can't have the best. We got to join our strategy, man. I appreciate it. Johnny did a great job, Cap. You're awesome. Nice it. work, man. Dang, that was fun. Good <laughs> job. They want you to hustle the victory lane. Uh, so do whatever you need there, buddy. He said he'd rather be lucky than good. Huh? Lucky and good is a pretty good combination for Johnny Sauter and company. I love Tad Boyd. Well, I think he felt like he was driving that truck. He was in there with Johnny Sauter, coaching him all the way to the checkered flag. And you could hear just how much. And look at Johnny's eyes. See how much he appreciates that teamwork. You can tell he's work. smiling. You can tell he's smiling. Oh. Just getting everybody ready for the NHRA <laughs> qualifying coming up. Doing a nice burnout here. Hermes with his crew chief, Joe Shear. Hermes. Well, Joe, your driver was on the racetrack out front, but 50 more laps on his tires than the truck behind him. Did you ever doubt that that was the right decision to leave Johnny Sauter on the racetrack? Well, we learned really early that uh, track position was everything. So our goal was we turned our, our strategy all around, and that was our goal was to get him out front there. We knew if we got him out front, the, tr the truck was pretty good, and we just had to get the gas mileage stuff where we needed it, and that's what our goal was, and then I was doing a lot of praying at the end. <laughs> Congratulations. <laughs> Thank you very much. That's Joe Shear. He's going to victory lane with Johnny Sauter. You know, prayers work, too. Absolutely. you got to be lucky. you got to be good. you got to pray a little bit. Johnny Sauter with his 14th career win, his first at Dover. It's been an exciting one here at the Monster Mile, Dover International Speedway, where Johnny Sauter has held off Kaz Gralla to get the victory. Let's check in with Caitlin with Kaz. Yeah, he was the runner-up today. Uh, Kaz, what else did you need out of your truck to catch Johnny Sauter? Do you think you could have? You know, we were close. I'd say my handling at the end was pretty good, but j so was Johnny's, and he had a little bit more air than I did. So um, really happy for him. Glad to see him win. That means we got two in the playoffs so far. I need one more on the team. But, um, yeah, overall solid day. Jerry Baxter called an unbelievable race on top of the pit box. I mean, these truck races, they're all about track position, all about clean air, and he got me that today in, at the right time. So uh, really happy about that. My Ganassi pit crew was on fire today, and this outlaw Chevy was very fast at the end. So. So, got to thank GMS Racing, Hendrick Power. This was a really good race car. Glad we got another top five. Good points today. Nice job. Now let's check in with Hermie, who's in victory lane. 
Johnny Sauter, after three consecutive second place finishes in the Camping World Truck Series, he makes it to victory lane here at Dover. And boy, did he have to work for this one. Johnny, three second place finishes in a row, but you win at Dover. How did you have to adjust your driving style those last 15, 20 laps playing offense and defense against a hard charging Kaz Grala? Yeah, no, it was, uh, you know, there's just some days when you wake up and you don't feel like it's going to be your day and things just don't seem to be clicking. And I felt like we were just off a little bit all weekend, but so proud everybody at GMS. One, two finish today. I uh, can't thank the Legion Airlines enough. Joe Shear, what a great call that was to try to make it on fuel. I'm um, just so proud of everybody's effort. Uh, Chevrolet, Hendrick Horsepower, pit stops were great today. And um, I want to say hi to my wife and kids. And uh, it's the month of June, month of the Sacred Heart of Jesus. And uh, thank the Blessed Mother. And uh, this is just a great day. Uh, unbelievable after three second place finishes to get a win. Um, definitely struggled today in traffic, just really, really tight. And just proud of these guys, man. They executed today. That's Johnny Sauter. He wins in Dover. What a big day for that team. As Johnny said, a 1-2 finish for GMS as Sauter gets that first win. So not only is Sauter the points leader, but he's got that win to go along with it to playoff points. That's five playoff points for Sauter yeah, in that victory. Big for Johnny Sauter. He joins. But now we have three drivers that are automatically guaranteed in the playoffs with Casparal and Christopher Bell. You see Timothy Peter still on the board there. Ninth, we know he's going to be back in the 99 truck. Maybe he can put something together for, uh, for the rest of the year continue to run full-time. Another impressive run for Ben Rhodes inside the top five. He finished fourth today, Caitlin. Yeah, fourth in points, fourth in the race. How do you think your team was able to execute all race long to get you a top five today? Well, we played it really conservative today for our safe flight Toyota Tundra. You know, this uh, place bit me last year. Miles the Monster got the best of me and I ended up in the wall. So I was probably more conservative here than I've ever been in my whole career. And uh, we still still had a shot to win it. So that's, that's really awesome. We just played it smart and, um, you know, we needed consistent finishes. We needed a solid finish to get us back up in points after some DNFs this year. Not from our doing, but from, you know, just bad luck. So I'm glad that we're finally getting back up there in points. And if we just keep running like this, playing it smart, racing smarter, not harder, we'll get our safe flight tundra in victory lane. Nice job. Ben Rhodes earns a second top five so far this season, guys. Yeah, well done indeed for Rhodes and company. Been fun to watch Ben Rhodes mature and get behind the wheel and still go hard, but go smart nearly winning a couple races lately. Hey, the race weekend's just getting started. Got the Xfinity Series race tomorrow afternoon. Coverage begins at 12.30, and then Sunday, the Monster Energy NASCAR Cup Series with our coverage beginning at 11.30 Eastern. Everything right here on FS1. Of course, next Friday, Camping World Truck Series resumes in Texas, at Texas Motor Speedway under the lights next Friday night. June is NASCAR month on FS1, isn't it? Remember Johnny Sauter won Texas last fall in our playoffs. And remember, these guys are going to be faced with that new pavement, that newly reconfigured turn one and two. It's going to get real out there in Texas. Well, the 21 owns that top spot on the pylon after 200 laps here around the one mile track. The monster mile as it is and the uh, sun sets in Dover, Delaware and Johnny Sauter finally gets that win here at Dover. Yeah, he did an outstanding job. Well, let's give a call to some other guys with some great finishes. How about Grant Enfinger with a third place finish? Austin Centric with his career best fifth place finish. And Brandon Jones, he got a sixth place finish that 99 track after nearly wrecking. And what about Justin Haley? He did wreck and got a top 10. <laughs> Johnny Sauter is the winner at Dover. Stay with us right here on FS1. NHRA qualifying from New England. It starts right now.